announcements first. We'll make sure everyone's got masks up and over noses. Everything's covered because we do need to make sure that we are all uh, being safe. So if it slips down over your, off your nose, make sure you pull it back up to make sure we all are staying safe. Thank you for that. Um, preschool starts Tuesday. And so we are cheering on our preschoolers. If any of you would like to help be a part of that, we'll line up on the sidewalk as the preschoolers are coming in. Um, they, we're asking people to be here about 7.45 because the children will start arriving by 8. Um, and just welcoming them. Again, we'll be socially distanced and wearing masks. If you have a Main Street shirt on, you can uh, wear that. And, uh, be excited for those little ones to begin their academic journey in preschool. We're going to be cheering on the elementary school next week. They will start on the 8th, and we will be at Bedford Elementary cheering them on as well. So let me know if you want to do that. We'll kind of get a head count for, for who's going to be at the elementary school. September 13th is Grandparents Day. Were you all aware? Y'all, have y'all ever celebrated Grandparents Day? We're going to celebrate Grandparents Day. We're going to try and do it in a safe manner. But those of you who are in person, if you want to send me or send Melva um, pictures of your grandchildren, because you know that's what's so special about being grandparents is the grandkids, um, or if you want to send pictures of your grandparents, um, and we'll kind of create a little collage to be able to to share that with in-person worship that we can see and celebrate Grandparents Day. Those that are worshiping online um, may not be as comfortable sharing those pictures online, so we're gonna give them a different kind of opportunity how to express their, their love and their appreciation for their grandchildren in a little bit different way. So any pictures that are shared here will just be in-house. They will not be um, broadcast online. Um, we are excited about our after-school program. It is uh, also starting on September 8th, and uh, we are still taking some registrations. There are still a few slots available uh, for those who would like to register for that. If you know of a family who may be looking for after-school care for their children, this is for children in kindergarten through sixth grade, let Beth Hicks know. And, uh, and she will get them processed and, and get them into the, our program. And then also just to, to let you know that um, you're, you don't see Paul here today. Um, Jenny is having to go to the doctor and the doctor has requested that she have a COVID-19 test before she comes. And so our policy is if you're awaiting the results from a COVID-19, then you need to not attend in person. And so they are abiding by those uh, standards and are staying at home. Don't feel like that's an issue, but just are trying to uh, go by the guidelines that we've set up. So I appreciated them doing that. And I feel like everything's gonna be fine with them, but just wanted you to know why Paul and Jenny were not here this day. Let us worship now our God.
Jesus calls us to servant ministry. We must be willing to help others, not counting the cost or rewards. Pretense, disharmony, greed have no place in discipleship. Serving God means receiving each person as though they are a beloved child. Lord, help us to truly become your disciples, creating us hearts for ministries of compassion and kindness. Let us pray. Lord, be with us this day, helping us to put our priorities in order so that we may faithfully serve you by serving your people. Heal our spirits. Enable us to follow your ways all the days of our life. Amen. Now you may stand as we uh, worship through music. Our hymn of praise is Yesu, Yesu. And Johnson's going to help us get the right percussion rhythm going. Several years ago, I had an opportunity to be at a music workshop with a lady named Alice Parker. And she said this piece was never to be sung standing still. Ever. sometimes have such deep and rich meaning. And so for our children's time today, I am sharing the story of the rainbow fish. Have any of you ever read this? Anyone seen this? Oh, this is a wonderful book. This rainbow fish, you can see, he's got such beautiful colors and shiny, sparkly scales. He thought he was the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. And one day, this little blue fish came up to him and he said, Ray, can I please have one of your shiny scales? Just one. And Rainbow Fish said, No way. And so that blue fish just ran off and, 
And the word got around that the rainbow fish didn't want to share. And see, he was not only the most beautiful fish, but he was also the loneliest fish in the ocean. No one wanted to hang out with him. And he got sad and, and, and even more sad. And he finally went and talked to this wise octopus to find out what, what he could do differently so he wouldn't be so lonely. And the octopus said, well, maybe you should share some of your shiny scales. Rainbow fish didn't like that idea at all. And he, he swam away and kept meditating and thinking about, thinking about that. Maybe I should share? Then a little blue fish came back up to him and, and he said, Rainbow fish, can I please just have one of your shiny scales? Rainbow fish finally agreed and gave him one of his scales. And you know what? He felt a little happy. And so other fish started coming up and he kept giving away his shiny scales until he only had one left. So by then he wasn't necessarily the most beautiful fish in the ocean, but he was one of the happiest fish in the ocean. Reminds us of the, the story that that happened in scripture when the, the disciples were arguing about who is the greatest. You know, and sometimes we think we need to be the greatest or the most beautiful or just the, the happiest. What, what can we do? And Jesus said, in order to be greatest, you must be least of all and servant of all sharing what you have with others like this rainbow fish did sharing what he had with others that's what jesus calls us to do and then maybe if we do some of that we can be happy just like this rainbow fish let us pray god help us to remember that sometimes in order to be the greatest we need to be the least, and we need to serve others. Amen. Lord, whose love through humble service for the weight of human need, who upon the forsaken, offered mercy's perfect deed. We, your servants, bring the worship, not a voice alone, but heart, consecrating
I know that we are doing music ahead of time, not live, to make sure we all stay safe. But isn't it wonderful that we have music like that that we can record and enjoy on the screen? Thank you all for putting that together. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning with the 33rd verse. They entered Copernicum. When they had come into a house, he asked them, What were you arguing about during the journey? They didn't respond since on the way they had been debating with each other about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be least of all and servant of all. Jesus reached for a little child, placed him among the twelve, and embraced him. Then he said, Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what, what is the greatest? What is the, the greatest movie ever made? What is the the greatest piece of music ever recorded? What is the the greatest vacation spot? What is the, the greatest book ever written? Who is the greatest athlete ever? Who has been the greatest president our country has ever had? I'm sure that for each of us, those questions will elicit different answers. And we might even get into some arguments about our opinions. In fact, these things may make us a little uncomfortable with the disagreements that might result about who, who or what is the greatest at anything. And that's what's going on with the disciples in our scripture today. They are arguing about who is the greatest among them. And I can imagine Peter saying, well, I'm the greatest because Jesus called me first. And Matthew saying, well, I'm the greatest because I used to be a tax collector. And you know how important those people are. Or Judas Iscariot saying, well, I'm the greatest because Jesus made me treasurer of the group. Maybe Philip and Bartholomew argue because they're the greatest. Because remember, when, when Jesus sent us out two by two, we healed way more people than the rest of you. Each of them may have been able to come up with their own reasoning why they think they should be considered the greatest among Jesus' disciples. But then, then it gets uncomfortable. Jesus knows what they were arguing about, and he calls them out on it. And they, they get so uncomfortable, they can't even answer the question. So as we continue this uncomfortable worship series, and, and I'm and so happy we've got a new little logo on, that we can put on the screen for uncomfortable. You may have seen it in the, the scripture background. Maybe it will come up. We're challenged today with this idea of what does it mean to be great. I think we still struggle with this concept of greatness. We, we think we're great when we become the, the CEO or, or president of a, a large company. We're great when we've reached the pinnacle of whatever our profession is. We're great when we can buy a home that all our neighbors will envy. We're great when people just flock to us for advice or for help. We're great when we earn accolades and awards for our efforts. 
So Jesus knows that, that we are struggling with this concept of greatness. And he calls us out on it. And suddenly things get uncomfortable for us. We don't want to answer him either. We want to keep this cultural understanding of greatness. That, that's the greatness that we seek. That's the greatness that boosts our feelings of self-worth. That suggests that the idea that, that we are better than someone else. But then we get uncomfortable when we remember Jesus saying, whoever wants to be first must be least of all and servant of all. This pandemic has helped us maybe to reevaluate our understanding of great. We could possibly view greatness now as essential workers. People who couldn't stay home protecting themselves from the virus. But those who were on the front lines, those who were, were working in hospitals, caring for those battling this virus. But then also those who are working in grocery stores, making sure we had the food that we needed. The truckers who were transporting that food. All of those who are in the food processing plants who are helping to package that food. Those who work and made sure that we had the gas that we needed to get to the few places we may have traveled in this pandemic. Those first response responders who are essential to keeping us safe. During this crazy time, maybe we're, we're realizing how we need to turn the concept of greatness upside down because we've not valued these essential workers in the past who are continuing to work so hard during this pandemic. Maybe this is a time for us to realize what true greatness is, to become uncomfortable with what society tells us is greatness. True greatness, Jesus says, is not to be above others, but to be least of all and servant of all. Elizabeth Johnson explains it as, as not ascending the social ladder, but rather descending it, taking the lowest place. It's not making friends with the powerful, but to welcome and care for those who are struggling, struggling to find dignity in their lives. Greatness, as society tries to teach us, implies power, realized potential, prominence, and prosperity. But that's not Jesus' understanding of greatness. To help clarify his understanding, he picks up a, a young child in his arms and tells them that whoever welcomes a child like this welcomes him. But not just him, the one who sent him. Barbara Lundblad that explains that, that Jesus wanted the disciples and wants us to welcome this child, not because the child is, is so precious and innocent and he hasn't made the mistakes that we as adults have made. Jesus wanted them to welcome this child because in his day, Children were seen as having very little value. And in the Gospel of Mark, children are, are sick or disabled. Jairus' daughter is near death when her father kneels before Jesus. The Syrophoenician woman's little daughter is possessed by an unclean spirit. And earlier in the chapter for today's scripture reading, a man brings his son to Jesus. And the boy has been experiencing terrible convulsions since childhood. And Jesus commands the spirit to leave the boy and help the boy stand upright to begin his new life convulsion-free. Barbara also explains that children in 
Mark's gospel are not symbols of holiness or innocence, but more often are the victims of poverty and disease. Jesus brings this child in from the margins of society into the very center of what his ministry is about. The child represents those who are forgotten and overlooked. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. If we live into this verse, it can, it can make us pretty uncomfortable. It means moving outside of our normal, easy, comfortable way of life and actually becoming so uncomfortable so that all, all might be welcomed at God's banquet table. It means not thinking that we are greater than anyone else and being willing to be a servant to those society may discount or even intentionally disparage. Jesus' life itself demonstrates God has a different understanding of greatness. According to Caroline Lewis, God becoming human, this wonder of the incarnation, upended every assumption of greatness that the world perpetuates. Because God becoming human told us in no uncertain terms that greatness is not about separation, but solidarity. Not about being better than, but about relationship. Not about self-adulation, but empowerment and encouragement of other. Greatness is, is determined by weakness and vulnerability, by service and sacrifice, by being uncomfortable so that others might experience this experience God's unmerited love. I appreciate David Lewis's uh, proposal that there are three short one-sentence prayers that we can pray in response to Jesus' teaching about what true greatness is. He suggests the, the first prayer is really a response to, to Jesus' instruction to be the least of all, the servant of all, a response that may make us uncomfortable. And this prayer is, Lord, help us. And then the, the second prayer comes when we fall short of that goal, when we give in to our desire to have prestige and power and recognition. We need forgiving of our pursuing greatness according to the world's standards and not God's. And so we pray, God, have mercy. And then the, the third prayer is when we realize that even as we fall short, Jesus still died for us, still lives for us, still loves us more than anything. And we can celebrate that good news by saying, thanks be to God. Lord, help us. God, have mercy. Thanks be to God. I hope you will take these three sentence prayers with you this week as you wrestle with how God is calling you to be uncomfortable and maybe rethink what greatness looks like in your life. Amen. Now is the time and the service that we recognize the many gifts that God has given us. We celebrate those gifts. 
While we can't receive offering the way we traditionally do, we do have the plates at the store and at the rear door. You could also continue to give online or through the mail. But let us now thank God for the opportunity to give back to God. Let us pray. God, we are so appreciative of your many blessings. Help us to return back to you some of what you have given us. And let this body of believers use the gifts that have been returned for your glory in order to serve you and serve people the best we can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to uh, lift up a, a few items for prayer. The first is a, a prayer of praise. You see we have a red rose here. We want to celebrate the birth of Taylor Hayden Moore. Yeah, we got the picture up. You can see the baby there. This is the new daughter of Blake and Danielle Moore. Grandparents are Sue and Steve, and I know they're really happy. You can't see their five, but they're smiling under their mask. Um, so we are celebrating that new life that has come into the world. That's wonderful. Also want to lift up prayers for uh, Donna Kirby. Donna had uh, surgery this week. Uh, she was hoping the last time that I spoke to her to be able to go home sometime this weekend. We'll see. I'll check in again the first of the week. Please be praying for her as she recovers from this surgery and that it will have uh, helped her to resume the life that, that she would like to, to have. If you have other concerns on your heart, raise your hand so we can just acknowledge that, yes, we have concerns or joys. And let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly God, we have gathered in this space, though we are smaller numbers than we would like. We know that we are gathering with the community of believers, those who are still gathering online, because we are trying to be faithful followers and do what we need to do to do no harm, to be safe. We thank you for this group that has gathered this day to worship, to celebrate you, to come and be filled with your spirit. We come knowing that people are still celebrating and having joys in their lives, new life coming into this world. And we are so grateful for those joys and those celebrations. We are grateful for the medical field, the knowledge that you have given so many of our doctors and nurses that they are able to do so much healing and helping. Be with those who are in the hospital who are battling disease or pain or whatever is confronting them, that the medical staff caring for them will, will know what they need to do to help them in their healing process. Lord, be with this world as we are in great need of healing. Healing from this violence, this virus, but also healing from the violence, the pain, the separation, and the anger that just seems to be pervasive in our society. Lord, help us be agents of your peace, agents of your love. God, help us through this service to be filled with your spirit so that when we leave, people will see you when they see us and how we are living our lives. Lord, please direct the, the ministry of this congregation that it will be pleasing to you and that we can work together as a body of believers to find your way forward and what you would have us to do and to be in this city of Bedford. 
We have our own personal concerns and issues that we are bringing before you this day, God. And we lay them at your feet, offering to you all of our worries and anxieties and concerns and giving you glory for all the joys and blessings. We are so grateful for this opportunity to worship you, to spend time in conversation with you. And we offer this prayer in Jesus' name as he taught us to pray. A Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You can stand as we worship God through our closing hymn, hymn of dedication. worship. I pray that you are leaving a little more uncomfortable than when you came, but ready to be the least of all and the servant of all in ways God is calling you this week. Go forth out into the world in the blessed name of our Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.